welcome to a fun little spring things video friends i've been relaxing having a very quiet morning reading but now i need to get dressed i need to paint my nails if you saw my last vlog my spring reset video i wanted to paint my nails this beautiful green color and just never got around to it holding myself accountable and we're gonna paint my nails. I'm gonna, I think, curl my hair and get dressed. And then we can talk about spring things. Yay. Born over a fall plan. Bad teeth and worse habits. Heels in a trailer If you want it, you should have it successfully finished painting my nails. I let them dry. I watched a 20 minute YouTube video and they're not completely dry, but I can't wait any longer. So let's start our Sheila Spring thing starter pack video by talking about books. Books that I want to read this spring season or have already read and a few book recommendations that are spring-like if you're looking for some books to get you in the spring mood. So we have some piles behind us. Let's go with this pile first. <laughs> All right, first book, which you've already seen so far at the beginning of this video is Wayward by Amelia Hart. And I've seen this book many places. I haven't had a chance to read it and I felt like spring was the best time to read it because I mean the cover the story actually covers three different characters who are all related somehow. Present day, 1942 and 1619 in England, I believe. Weaving together the stories of three extraordinary women across five centuries, Wayward is an astonishing debut with an enthralling novel of female resilience. And I've been really enjoying this book so far. It's only like a little over 300 pages and with three different POVs, we're seeing three different stories. So I feel like the author's done a great job at getting a lot into the book within a short amount of page count if that makes sense and we we I feel like connected to each of the different characters and there's this looming kind of like question or mystery of how they're all linked together also mysteries within their own stories so I'm about where am I I'm a little over halfway through and it's definitely keeping me engaged. And one of the characters is really into insects and bugs and just nature in general. Love the nature elements and the descriptions in here. And I think one of the characters or all of the characters is neurodivergent or 
maybe I'll know more when I get to the end of the book. I've seen some reviews of the book where people have mentioned that the characters or character is neurodivergent and I'm definitely seeing that in our one character named Violet, the girl that likes insects and wants to be alone and just doesn't feel like she belongs. Really all the characters at the core of their like stories don't feel like they belong but Violet you really see it like woven through the story and how she just struggles um, in the 1940s with uh, gender norms and society's expectations and she wants to go climb trees but she has to be a lady. Also a trigger warning for this book that there is SA in it so FYI. A book that I just finished reading is The Berry Pickers by Amanda Peters. This book I think won a Barnes and Noble like best book of the year last year and this is also a debut author book that has done extremely well. A four-year-old Mi'kmaq girl goes missing from the blueberry fields of Maine, sparking a tragic mystery that haunts the survivors, unravels a family, and remains unsolved for nearly 50 years. This book goes between two different POVs, Joe and Norma. As you can probably tell from the summary, this book was sad but it was like beautifully sad. Uh, I feel like it dealt with emotions, like high emotions of living and being content, but also death and the feelings and expectations that come around death and just what happens to two different families when there's a secret and then the secret is exposed. I was initially drawn to this book because it takes place in Maine, a little near Bangor, Maine, and context, my dad's side of the family is from Bar Harbor, Maine, so I have ties and an emotional connection to Maine. So I really love reading books that take place in Maine and New England in general. And this uh, indigenous family, they are from Nova Scotia and they would come down to Bangor to go in the berry fields and pick and pick blueberries over the summer and then they'd leave by fall. So one of the summers, they, the whole family comes down and their youngest daughter, Ruthie, who was four years old, goes missing at the time. And Ruthie was last seen by her older brother, the second youngest child named Joe, who's our other POV character. And Joe just carries all this guilt with him throughout his entire life. And you see how that guilt and shame just destroys him as a person and his entire family. Also within this book, you just see how indigenous families cope with, you know, what's been done to their peoples by America and Canada. And then our other POV character, Norma, she grew up as a single child in an affluent family in Maine. And she always had these dreams. She called them dreams. And her mother would always tell her, don't talk about these dreams. They'd always give her headaches. So she learned to suppress those dreams. As she grows older, Norma slowly comes to realize there is something her parents aren't telling her. Unwilling to abandon her intuition, she will spend decades trying to uncover this family secret. So we have Norma's point of view and Joe's point of view, and this all stems back to the Berry Fields in 1962 when Ruthie goes missing. And I love this book. I really recommend it. I gave it a 4.5 stars. So it has that mystery element, that literary fiction element. The writing is really beautiful. Um, Amanda Peters, as her de debut novel, I'm really intrigued to see what else she writes and publishes. So highly recommend. All right, another book. I guess it's a book of poetry, Mary Oliver's Devotion. So this is a collection of her poetry over the uh, over her entire career, starting in the present and going backwards. And I'm just slowly making my way through the poetry, just reading, you know, a page when I feel called to it. So now that it's spring time, I'm definitely called to pull this out more and just starting my day or having it part of my morning routine, reading a poem really can transform my morning and just set me up for a great day. I really love Mary Oliver's poetry because it's so connected with nature and she writes about nature in her writing and there is a little bit of a faith element to it as well, which I'm here for. So spirituality, uh, religion, faith, whatever your higher like power is that you seek comfort in, I feel like this book would be great for anybody that is looking for some words of encouragement or just to l let them be present and find peace in the everyday. And I love 
I love Mary Oliver. So another book that I just added to my TBR, yesterday I went to one of my favorite used bookstores to have a browse to try and find some other spring books because I've been getting through my spring TBR rather quickly. Uh, the Bookshop of Second Chances by Jackie Fraser. This was on a display and drawn to the cover. I think I've heard of this book before. I'm not sure if I added it to my Goodreads TBR at all, but this jumped out at me and I'm just looking for another romance to read. I feel like in springtime it's either like nature or like naturey outdoors kind of vibes that I'm going for, like magical realism or romance. <laughs> a woman desperate to turn a new page heads to the Scottish coast and finds herself locked in a battle of wills with an intriguingly aloof bookseller in this utterly heartwarming debut novel by Jackie Fraser. Another debut <laughs> author. I'm just really into the thought of somebody who's going through a breakup and they need to escape and get away and they go to Scotland, which Again, any book set in Scotland, I'm already interested. I'm curious to see what I will think of this book. Let me know if you've read it and what you thought of it, but yes. While we're on the romance front, I just recently read The Gentleman's Gambit by Evie Dunmore. I wanted to read this like in Christmas time or like that period and I just never was in the mood for it and then I decided to read it last month um, since I was getting in my spring, you know, romance kind of book vibe. This is part of a series called A League of Extraordinary Women, which I'm also going to recommend this whole series to you guys. I don't have the second book of the series, but the first book is Bringing Down the Duke, and this whole series uh, takes place in 19th century England, and it's following the suffragists named the Oxford Rebels, and each book chronicles a different uh, member of this group. There's four different women, and their personal stories, but also the overarching theme of the women fighting for um, women to vote in England. White women to vote, I should say, in England. This is just the perfect blend of historical romance. Like, I really, really loved Bringing Down the Duke. This is probably one of my favorite books. Portrait of a Scotsman is book three, takes place in Scotland, and The, Gentleman, the Gentleman's Gambit, which I just finished reading. Our character, uh, deeply introverted Catriona Campbell wants the right to vote and a professorship at Oxford. And then she meets a man who is her father's colleague, who's actually in England to repatriate uh, artifacts and things that the English looted from the Middle East from his home in Lebanon. So there's that like, museum aspect to it, repatriation aspect. This woman is is intrigued by this foreigner. It has a lot of different elements in it and I think Catronia, if I'm even saying that right, is also neurodivergent. I mean at this point in history I, that term wasn't coined. They're calling her introverted but actually in the author's note um, the author does mention that she if she lived in the modern time, she would be considered neurodivergent. So I really love that there's a neurodivergent character in this group of girls and that they really highlighted it in the story and in her personality. So recommend this whole series any time of the year. And actually I read this book originally on ebook and found this for a dollar at the used bookstore. So I had to get it for my collection because why not? It's in fine condition. I just need to get the second book to finish my collection. <laughs> three more books, friends, three more books. So Emily Wilde's Encyclopedia of Fairies by Heather Fawcett. I've mentioned this book before now that I'm remembering, um, but this is a great book that I think would be great any time of the year, but it's also a good spring read because of the nature-y effect. I know some people have struggled with this book because of the writing. It is a historical fiction taking place in I think the 19th century, but the main character is a Cambridge professor named Emily Wilde and she does research on fairies. This book is also part of a series and the second installment just came out. I think in January, and I do want to read that at some point, not sure when, whenever I can pick it up, maybe when it comes out on paperback, but definitely a good read for the spring or any time of the year. And I'm going to plug this book. If you've been around here <laughs> for a while, I mentioned this book years ago in like probably another kind of spring TBR video, and I never read it, The Secret Garden by Frances Hodgson Burnett. Burnett? which is a classic like children's literature book. And this cover is beautiful by the way. And I just never got around to reading it. So maybe I'll get around to reading it this 
year. But there's illustrations in it, you know, I feel like it's really inspiring for this time of the year. So we'll, we'll see if I read this. And my last book, which is not a spring book by any means, but I am excited to read it. A Fate Inked in Blood um, by Daniel L. Jensen. So this is a romanticy book. If you saw my fourth wing vlog, you know how I feel about romanticy and I kind of swore off ever reading a romanticy book again, but but one of my uh, mottos that I live by is never say never or it's okay to say something and then change, you know, your actions in the future. We're, we're humans, we can change. So I want to give romanticy another chance. I got this book through Book of the Month and was drawn to the plot because it follows a family of Vikings. So we're, we're adding Vikings into the element of romanticy and I love historical fantasy and, and Vikings. So we're gonna try it. Uh, let me know if you've read this. I haven't seen any reviews. I'm not on TikTok. So I don't know like how the mainstream world is feeling about this book, but I'm gonna do a reading vlog for this book soon. You guys can see like if I change my mind about romanticy um, and I'm definitely gonna go into that reading vlog with lower expectations because I had really high expectations for Fourth Wing and that's what kind of did me in <laughs> at the end of it. A shield maiden blessed by the gods battles to unite a nation under a power hungry king while fighting her growing desire for his fiery son and this Norse inspired fantasy romance. So I mean, you know, we know what's gonna happen. We know, we know. And I think I just need to know that this is romance first, fantasy second, and not the other way around because that's what happened with Fourth Wing. So we'll see. Stay tuned, subscribed if you're not already subscribed to see what I think. <laughs> all right, those are all my books, friends. But while we're on the topic of publications, I wanna plug Bella Grace, which is a magazine a periodical oh my gosh my archivist is coming out this is like a publication that you can get at barnes and noble if you have a barnes and noble or like a major bookstore near you like books a million or chapters i have a few other issues that are more i have a fall one and a winter one and this one is like a workbook called field guide to everyday magic and i'm saving this for when i'm just like having a really bad like period and actually i probably should have used this over the winter time when i was struggling mentally and creatively but we're saving it it's inspiring and i just want to get more into magazines like paper magazines i used to love getting magazines through the mail or getting them at the grocery store like 17 and j14 and all right friends that's that's my, that's Sheila's spring reading list and reading recommendations. Let me know what you're reading currently, what you've read recently or what books you wanna read this spring because I need recommendations. I actually really want some more spring recommendations. Um, I've, I've been out about looking at, you know, curated places at bookshops, but nothing's really been catching my eye and I, haven't been watching much booktube, so I don't really know what people are recommending. So feel free to let me know down in the comments. The trees, they are singing to the tune of a song. And the wind is gently ringing the bell that brings the morning. Welcome of the dawn All right friends, I've had lunch. My lipstick is probably not as good as it was earlier. My curls are probably <laughs> not as curly, but that's okay. I wanted to talk about music and TV shows which is not an exhaustive list, don't get too excited, but I do wanna share what I've been listening to now that we're in spring and just, I don't know, open the conversation up because I love music. And yeah, so of course, first on my <laughs> recommendation list is Casey Musgraves. Um, her latest album, Deeper Well, came out last month. I'm a new Casey Musgraves fan. I just discovered her recently, which I'll get into how I discovered her when I share the other artists that I'm listening to right now. But she's been around for like 10 years and is a country singer and then kind of moved into pop and now she's like in the folk pop 
country category and country western is having a moment this year and i love folk music like anyway and this album is definitely like folk inspired it's very fleetwood mac inspired if you love fleetwood mac which i also love that band as well and yes so i actually made a playlist on youtube and i will link it down below called sheila's spring tunes and i'm just going to share some of the songs that i've been loving and if you're curious what i've been vibing to you can go check out that playlist so i'll have some of my favorite casey songs on that playlist um another artist that i've been really into lately is Nor noah khan i can't say his last name i want to say kahan but everyone says khan so i don't know but he's a folk singer songwriter from Vermont and he's had a couple of albums out but got huge last year and I discovered him through like Instagram reels you know as one does these days and that's how I found Casey Musgraves is actually through his song She Calls Me Back which Casey sings on that song and the moment I heard her voice I was just like mm what is this who is this this is just like connecting to my soul so i'll have some noah khan songs in the playlist too another artist that i've been loving so much and definitely is like spring vibes and getting me like excited is caroline polachek desire i want to turn into you ever asking edition amazing amazing album it came out last year and i just recently discovered it <laughs> and love so many songs on that album she even has a song called spring is coming with a strawberry in the mouth and i just like envision myself running through a field of trees or flowers when i'm listening to this in a big long floral dress and the sun's out and everything's happy and i really like listening to her music to get me feeling peppy and confident and i was listening remy wolf is a new artist that i recently discovered she has an album coming out in july and she released a single called cinderella which is such a bop i have been listening to that on my way to work and at home and just you know it's a bop so that's also on my playlist waxahachie has been around for a while and i discovered their music a couple years ago they used to be like rock like indie alternative emo and then kind of went towards more um folky and now they're leaning into the country and i'm all here for it um their new album tiger blood just recently come out and i've been vibing to songs on that and another another song from an older album called lilacs just is very very spring energy which will be on the playlist girl in red i'm not a huge fan of girl in red but i love we fell in love in october you probably know that song if you're on social media and she just released a new album called i'm doing it again baby and there's a few bops on there i'm not a huge huge fan but i definitely want to share the music where the credit is due cowboy carter beyonce's new album who's been listening to that i haven't listened to the whole thing i've been trying to make my way through it it's definitely like an experience beyonce is a iconic classic and i've loved beyonce since destiny's child way back when i love the jolene cover i love the blackbird cover i love the opening song give me an album with a good opening song and i'm just like Yes, like the opening to Carolyn Polachek's album, Welcome to My Island, is so, so good. And it's going to be the first song on my playlist. And just imagine me just bopping and twirling because that always happens when that song comes on. Mama, I've talked about Mama before. I'm just, they're not really spring per se, but I might as well show off the vinyl that I have of them. I'll have a couple songs on the playlist for you guys to check out. But they're like alternative rock music and george and i love this band i feel like it is kind of a spring bop for us because we used to go to like soccer games philadelphia union soccer games and would always listen to this album on our drive there so whenever i like listen to music i think of like being in the car going somewhere fun <laughs> with george so i love that about music how it just takes you back to a memory and places you there. And of course I'll end this by just mentioning Tay Tay, Taylor Swift. I mean, I'm a folklore girl through and through. Like now that I've 
become a bigger fan. I just know that I will always love Folklore and that's ultimately my favorite album. So I'll have some songs on my playlist from that. And of course, Tortured Poets is coming out soon. So that will also be my new anthem album for this season. And yeah, music for TV shows. I thought I would have more TV shows to recommend, but I don't know. George and I recently watched we're watching Shogun on Hulu, which is based on the novel by James Clavell, Clavel, and I have not read the book, but I've heard of the book, and I definitely now want to read the book, but we've been loving the show so much. Um, it's in Japanese mainly, so there are a lot of subtitles, but it's based on this English pilot. Um, they call him the Anjin. He comes over from England and lands in Japan and this is in the 1600s Japan when the Portuguese has just kind of infiltrated and started creating Christian churches and so we have that element going on. So like my history nerd side is just like whoa and there's action, there's drama, you know, it has everything that you would want in a, a TV show and we have two more episodes left in this first season and it's like getting pretty pretty intense so highly recommend that show but yeah i don't really have anything else to share because normally i'm watching true crime or youtube or anime i've started watching sailor moon like the 90s classic sailor moon i never like watched it at all growing up and i am loving it i really love mercury and if you guys have noticed my videos where I, I do have a Mercury uh, Sailor Moon t-shirt. It's actually George's t-shirt that is too small for him. So I just adopted it into my wardrobe and I felt like such a poser <laughs> wearing it. But now I can say Mercury is my favorite character. Um, so that's what I've been watching in the evenings on top of like forensic files or Nickelodeon shows to help me go to sleep. I even pulled up like Netflix to like see if there was anything else that I'm like watching, but like really, I don't know. Oh, literally yesterday, George and I started watching Fallout, which is on Amazon Prime. It is a dystopian sci-fi show based on the video game, if you've heard of Fallout the video game. So basically the whole premise is the world, the apocalyptic apocalypse, like what would happen, what would have happened if the atomic bomb had like destroyed America. And the first episode was really, really intense, really awesome. I am really into it. Um, and of course the soundtrack is all like 50s, like Western music, Johnny Cash and Frank Sinatra. And it's just a vibe. I... On the lifestyle front, I got two candles yesterday at Target, which I definitely am excited about. I have like a lavender candle and that's kind of the only like candle I have right now. I also have a candle Alicia, my, my best friend gave me that I will light when tourist season uh, starts, but I got pineapple lemonade. This is a soy candle. It smells so good. You could probably say this is probably more of a uh, summer candle, but I just love any kind of tropical fruit and this is getting me just excited for warmer weather and this one's a little more on the calm chill side this is rain water lily it smells so good so calming tranquil the lily like floral notes i love it i love it and the last thing i just want to talk about is just like how spring is a time to really like switch up and change your routines and habits. I've been taking a 10 day mindfulness course on Insight Timer, which is a like meditation app that is free, um, but they do have a paid version where you can get more uh, perks like access to courses and challenges and more meditation. So I upgraded to the paid account at the beginning of this year and have been taking like random courses on there about manifesting and mindfulness. And this spring, this 10 day spring renewal course by Jessica Amos has been such a nice way for me to start my morning. So I'll do my yoga and I usually do some kind of like five minute meditation, which is just something I randomly find on the app, but I've been pairing my yoga with you know, listening to whatever the lesson is. Spring is a time for clearing out what no longer serves you while inviting what you want for yourself going forward. It's a time of creation and preparation. Particularly if you're feeling overwhelmed, fearful, or anxious, learn how 
Learn how to come into alignment with the spring season through heartfelt and conversational teachings that bring about mindful creation and present moment awareness. Connect with your natural rhythm, listen to your heart, and be renewed by spring's vital energy. I've been really, really enjoying this. Um, let's see, day one is about like creative energy, and I mentioned in my, la my spring reset vlog how winter I was just hibernation mode, being mode, you know, being still, not really creating much, and spring really is the time to come out of the ground, come out of the cave, emerge, and now I'm starting to put action into my ideas and actually have the energy and capacity and motivation to do it. So if you feel like you've been just kind of a blob all winter, I mean, good. Now is the time that we can start, you know, getting more inspired and invigorated to go out and about and do things, work on our goals, even socialize if we're introverted and don't really like, you know, engaging. Food and like moving your body has been two other big lessons in this course, like, how I needed a food reset, which I talked about in my last video, and like body movement, like in the winter, we went to the gym, but some days were just really hard. Now that like spring's here, we're able to go out on walks and really enjoy enjoy being outside and in nature. And like once spring, summer comes, I just wanna be like outside as much as I can. So, ah, spring. And I think another thing like, I want to limit my TV time. I even like feel like I actually don't really want to watch TV like in the winter. In the winter I did a lot of reading um, and just a lot of like TV and YouTube consumption but now like that spring's here I'm able to go outside. I actually have energy that and motivation to do things. I find myself wanting to actually read a book instead of watching TV after work or going for a walk or just like sitting on the patio. So these little like changes are really profound ways for us to uplift our routines and put them in more alignment with the season that we're in so let me know like what routines or habits that you find yourself gravitating towards more in the springtime or if you have like a set like routine that you know like once spring comes like this is happening <laughs> oh and one last thing i keep forgetting Clearly I need like an outline, like clothing and outfits and just feeling like I need a updated wardrobe. So I went to Target yesterday on a mission to just try on a bunch of clothes because it's time. I'm feeling inspired to kind of add a little more pieces to my wardrobe. And at some point soon I need to declutter my closet and like put the winter clothes away, put out the spring summer clothes. It's still like chilly like definitely chilly in our apartment where I still wanna have access to sweaters and I wear cardigans all year round anyway because of work. So that's not happening yet. Probably in the next couple weeks and I will try to film it for you guys. But I got these pants that, you know, and I tried on a lot of stuff that I ordered online because of like sizes or like colors and just wanted to make sure like I tried the right size on so I knew what size to order and I'm super excited because Monday all the stuff's coming and I'm excited to add some more color I had I got like some green I bought a lot of green clothing because I've just been loving green <laughs> lately and hello spring speaking of green I also just got a new comforter um, so if you saw again my last video I swapped out my like winter comforter for my summer spring comforter which is more of this like green naturey vibe but we've been sleeping for it with for a week and it's like too hot for us it's definitely like not a cooling comforter by any means and i don't know we've had it for a couple of years and i guess we just dealt with it but i mean it's not even summertime and we're already just <laughs> waking up in the middle of the night like hot so i went and bought a new comforter on Amazon, it just came today and I already unboxed it and it's like on the bed and I'm gonna swap it out, but I'm gonna put that on the bed and it had reviews that it's, you know, people that have like cold, like night sweats and things, they, they don't have night sweats when they sleep with this comforter. So we're gonna try it out. It's also reversible, which is great to, you know, sw switch things up. And there's a ton of colors. Um, I will link it down below for anybody that's interested. They have so many different colors. I got like this olive green color because hello, 
green, I'm obsessed. But there was also this terracotta color that I wanted, but I just looked at a video of one of the people that reviewed it and the orange just looked too bright. Like it needed, it needs to be like the right kind of dark burnt orange color for it to work. So I got the olive green. I'm like looking at it right now and it's not as bright as I thought it would have been, like how it looked online. So I'm gonna have to get used to that, but I'm gonna swap out the sheets and, and put that comforter on and hopefully it solves our problem of sleeping. All right, friends, I think that's it for this video. I hope you got something out of this video, inspiration and motivation. And I just would love to hear from you any book recommendations, movies, TV shows that you've been watching. I didn't even mention any movies because you know, I'm not really a movie buff by any means. George and I are trying to watch more movies, but you know, give and take, give and take. Oh so yeah, thank you for being here friends and I will see you in the next one, bye. Let me tell you about the trees and the seas, how it's all connected. Flowers and the birds and bees, then all the lights, yeah, we're all affected. Watching, pray, pray, pray.